Hello, divine, beautiful souls. This is Energy Speaks Podcast with your host, Catriel. So, welcome, welcome, welcome for a second year of Energy Speaks Podcast. Okay, for this episode, one, I want to, um, I want to bring the awareness in of now. It has been one year and about a month, eh, uh, maybe not a month, about a half, a couple weeks, since the first episode of Energy Speaks Podcast. Now, let's recap what happened in this past year. Um, <clears throat> in this past year, I, I started off with an episode, okay, um, explaining about myself and about my story and uh, why I was starting this Energy Speaks podcast. To, to one, uh, give a voice to every single soul, um, uh, to empower each soul, to have a sacred conversation with me, who, whoever aligns, and be able to share their beautiful perspective of life, and their beautiful gifts that they bring to this planet. And, and so um, I was able to create this sacred container, this sacred space to be able to hold these conversations. Since then, when I started, I was in St. Petersburg, Florida in a podcast studio, which at some point will be returning to um, for about a month. But um, when I began it, began this beautiful podcast, um, it was during the midst of a Mercury retrograde, which if you have listened to any of my episodes um, previously, you will know that I have a sacred space in my being for Mercury in retrograde. And again, let's recap. Um, now, when listening to this, you will have just entered out of a Mercury retrograde and in the shadow period. And I will explain some of the stuff in regards to that. And why is it significant and all of that. So Mercury retrograde is simply, from a scientific, astro-scientific perspective, is, a, is Mercury appearing to move backwards, okay, um, in uh, <clears throat> counterclockwise. And now we have the world interpreting what energies come off of a Mercury retrograde most of which the rest of the world I do not align with. <laughs> hey. <laughs> most people tend to have a fear or a negative um, uh, response to a Mercury in retrograde. For me, again, I love to find the positive in anything and everything. And so... Um, one of the, the, the teachings I feel in regards to Mercury in retrograde is to realize that, okay, yeah, our technology, our physical, this, this, what we're doing right here, this technology might go a little wonky. Why? Because the signals of Mercury, okay, the communications, the planet of communication is is kind of having a, a hiccup right now. But what is that creating space for? And that's the topic of today, is creating sacred space, okay? With a couple other, you know, reflection points, of course. It's creating a sacred space for us to turn tune in to our own technology within us, our divine connection with Hashem, 
with divine creator, with God, the universe, source. <laughs> and, and so that, that is beautiful. <laughs> To be able to um, take yourself away from technology, um, for some of us, and and sometimes like honestly, like you kind of have to feel this out yourself. Like some people feel very affected by this intense chatter in their mind. Now. The, the point I want to make is, like, we can have this sweet spot in our mind, this, this beautiful um, connection with Hashem that can be identified during this period of time. It can be identified at all moments of time. But when we have a world of, of energy, okay, telling us one thing about Mercury in retrograde, there's going to be a, a, a response that um, essentially does the exact opposite. Kind of like the laws of science. It's exactly like the laws of science, okay? What goes up must come down with you know with a reaction there's always going to be an equal and opposite reaction so that's what we're essentially seeing here if we have a huge mass collective talking about how mercury um you know in retrograde influences them a certain way that we're going to have um <clears throat> A response to that of well this actually provides space for this and then we'll have a lot of other people who are just neutral that's life so let me present the opposite side of the coin which for me provides a, um, a deeper connection with Hashem because I'm specifically putting the intention to do so it's all about the intention guys Really, it really is. And how we set the intention and the perspective that we have um, can affect our experience. And so my um, response to this is let's go deeper. Let, let me set the intention to have a very, very specific communication during this time. Um, where as I'm an empath and I can feel other beings, right? Um, I'm taking this, this dominant stance to say, hey, it's time to really go deeper in ourselves and say, all right, well, how, how do I communicate normally? And what would be the opposite of that? Okay, so that's another thing, another main principle that comes up with Mercury in retrograde is, um, it, you know, at a scientific level, yeah, it, it can actually, um, you can actually feel it kind of like the balancing. So imagine like the Libra energy, the uh, balancing energy, and um, so you have like the other side being highlighted. And, and so like, <clears throat> or really, uh, we can use this with uh, Gemini, I should say, specifically. But I want to bring in Libra because um, Libra gives the idea of balance, of, of restoring the balance. And, um, and it's the balance of the heart and the mind. So <clears throat> that's where we can take this kind of like um, reframing of the mind and bring it into the heart space. Now, let's, let's, that's a little bit of Mercury 
in retrograde in a nutshell and what we came through. Um, and I started this beautiful podcast, right? And for me, it felt so right to start something uh, during this time because um, the rest of the world says you just shouldn't. And you, you know, and I don't follow what, you know, like the rest of the world says. I follow my, my heart and I follow my in intuition. And I feel like Mercury Retrograde provides me the opportunity to say, hey, I 100% will follow my intuition and, and connect deeper and strengthen my connection with my connection with Hashem, my connection deeper with N, which is the same, okay? So, um, as that is being said, now um, I've, uh, I've created sacred space instead of Instead of um, starting something, you know, a year later, I, I was just guided not to to do any podcasts for a while. Okay, I from April until um, now, I guess it's been over a month. Yeah, um, I did not put anything on that platform. I was guided not to. It didn't feel right. It didn't. It felt like there was something being um, transmuted. Something was integrating for me to come back, you know, stronger and, and with more depth. And essentially, my first year was a pilot program of, of like, what do I want Energy Speaks to be? And how does this work for me, you know, within the show and how does this not? And one thing that I loved that I did was I had... Uh, sacred conversations with other people, holding the balance and being able to share that with the, the world. But I also love the fact that I could do um, solo podcasts, you know? Um, <clears throat> I guess solo cast. <laughs> um, and be able to talk about these deeper concepts. Now, I feel like with... I, I, f I feel like with the podcast the the having people on the show i really felt like was so beneficial for me and i felt like it was in my element but when it came down to my solo casts some of them were strong and some of them i feel like um i i needed um an anchoring point and i needed more experience to really talk alone, right? I, I wasn't able to get to the level of depth that I wanted because somewhere within me, um, I was a little bit scared um, to go deeper and, and to speak my truth. Now, here's the funny thing is, I could talk about my experiences and all of that, and those were the, the, the ones where I felt like I went deeper on. But when I would talk about different concepts within my work, it was hard for me to put into words. And having a podcast, being able to put them in words, kind of like the point. <laughs> so now I feel like I, of course, now in this Gemini season, I'm integrating everything that I did last year and, and elevating it higher. And going deeper so I want to talk about sacred space what did we just talk about all right I created a podcast I created the sacred space for that podcast and <clears throat> then after a year I took a, a pause a sacred pause why was that important? Okay. Note in regards to Scorpio energy. Okay. This is how I'm identifying it. Um, because I like to speak through the zodiacs. Now, you could just talk in normal terms. But I like to relate this because it shows a visual image. Scorpio energy is all about the zero energy. The circle. 
the sacred space, okay? What does a zero have in it? It has a boundary, a container, right? So like with the boundary, it, be, it, 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 able, it is able to show us several things. Something is outside of this boundary and something that's in the sacred space, okay? And what happens here is these sacred ingredients go inside the sacred space. Everything outside of it does not go inside, okay? It is outside, right? Like, we're not letting it into the circle. Why is this important? Okay. Because we have the, the ability, the, um, the, I'm trying to think of the word. We have the ability to put things inside the sacred space, right? And it's important. It shows us what we value. Funny I say value because the, um, <clears throat> the complementing energy to Scorpio is Taurus energy, which is the birthing of the manifestation, which is essentially what we're talking about here. Okay? Now, I have already put in... Um, sacred ingredients. I put in the Leo energy, the love, and I nurtured it, okay? Um, the, the, the nurturing would come from the cancer energy. I put in the feeling. I put in the love. And how did I do that? Okay, every single, every single day that I did a podcast, I came with my heart um, full, and I nurtured it and, 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 and set an intention to um, give it all I could. And I did it consistently, okay? Um, that was something important. I nurtured it. I fed it. Then I had the belief, okay? Sagittarius energy. I had the belief that... Um, what I was talking about mattered and, and that what I was doing mattered, that, um, that it could be done. I had the faith that I could do it. Um, and I had a journey with it. All of these are concepts of Sagittarius energy. Now, going into the Aquarius energy, the belonging, okay? I did something. I went outside my comfort zone, right? And I figured, you know, like I, I found belonging in this and, and what belonged in this podcast and what did not, okay? What went, what was inside the sacred space and what was not. I identified that and it created a beautiful alchemy a beautiful like frequency for me to be con be able to connect with all of you out there this beautiful connection of of, of different sacred souls um on this planet and which is very aquarian right and organizations that's literally what it's all about right and and it's in a and it's in a um, a unique way. And then I won, uh, sorry, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the Gemini energy coming in and communicating that. This is my vision. This is my, my, my sacred baby that I'm giving out to all of you. I communicated, um, you know, to everyone what this is about and why was it important? Um, and then, uh, number six, 
Libra energy. I, I was able to receive this energy to myself and then you were all able to receive this energy of listening to these sacred communications. And it provided a level of balance within me. There's multiple perspectives. We can look at this energy, right? It created a, an amount of harmony with, within my being because I was taking something that was informational based in, in the brain, in the mind, right? Um, that really the mind is, is in the soul, okay? Solar plexus, actually. And I used it and I integrated it with my heart. Libra, balance between the mind and the heart. And then, seven was, I had faith. Um, I had faith that all of this was, was going to happen and that it was working and uh, faith in my show and, and faith in all of you for listening. And um, I had compassion with myself when I felt like I didn't do the best, um, that I kept moving forward. Um, I also sensed um, layers of what needed to be said, like really having that divine presence and that connection with Hashem. This is all Pisces energy. Um, and then number eight is Capricorn energy. I built something and I, I decided to commit to this. I was consistent with it. This is where the consistency really comes in, this divine commitment. And maybe that for you um, allowed, you know, for, for consistency of listening, I hope. Um, that, you know, the topics being talked about was in alignment with you listening every single week or whatever your ritual is, okay? And, um, and so this became a, um, a structure for myself, a, 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 a foundational piece within my life that it's hard for me to, to, to walk away from because I have such deep love for it, that first intention in that sacred space. Because I get to share my heart with all of you. And then the, the, the nine energy, which is the Aries energy, is taking inspired action. I showed up. The I am energy. I showed up and I took inspired action and I did it. I did it. I'm talking to all of you right here, right now. And it's so beautiful and I'm excited. It's like my inner child comes out, which is another aspect of, of um, you know, the Aries energy. And then it birthed this beautiful, beautiful show. Now, um, this is the 10 energy. It's this Taurus energy. It's the manifestation. But what, what is um, all a part of that? The sacred space, the 10, the zero, and then the one that jumps out of it. It's the love, the love for the show. And so um, <clears throat> what happened, I feel like, was when I took this sacred pause this was the gestation. This was the really a uh, year of, of, of birthing out this baby of something that actually stuck in my life. And I will tell you guys, you know, it's really sometimes difficult for me to stay consistent with something um, every week or whatever because I have a lot of all or nothing energy. And I was explaining this to someone 
um, this past week. And, and it's, it, it, and this is the thing, it's like, we have to really honor ourselves and our energy, but we can work with what we have. So for me, all, it was all about how I structured things. Yes, I know I like to crank out episodes, all right? I get an inspiration and I go with it. And sometimes that means that I am in the studio for, um, you know, two days a week doing eight episodes. Um, and then I have all of my material for the next two months. And that's okay. But I, I set myself up to be able to do that because I said, oh, I could release them, you know, all right now but that for me wasn't being mindful with the energy of what I just created I staggered their releases because I felt like it was important to um, to allow this energy that was just spoken out energy speaks be harnessed and ground in for each and every single episode. Now, um, what was a bit hard for me is consistency in regards to um, when I would have someone on my show and um, releasing that out to social media. Now, I think it for me, it was all about the consistency, oh sorry, it's all about the organization. How we organize things is really, really important. And so I noticed when I had, um, take notes guys, if you, um, if this resonates, you know, like in regards to maybe doing your own show or something that this model could um, be applied to, is for me, I took my, my notes on my iPhone and I would create a folder energy speaks and every single person that was on my show I had them send me um, I think it was three different things a picture of them a <clears throat> a bio of, of who they are like what what they want to like say to the world uh, via a post um, and you know what is written you know within the description of the show and then also a title that really resonates with the, the episode that they just recorded with me. And for me, that was really, really like important to be um, consistent with, with asking and to making sure that I get the information. And I felt like when I was very specific on like, this is, um, this is what I need from you and, and everything, that's when things went really, really well. And I was able to do my work of sending things out um, in a timely manner and, um, and really be consistent in getting the show out there and, and talking about it. But when I would be lax on... Um, on uh, hey, you can do this or not do this or whatever. It wasn't concrete. It was, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's not a bad thing to be concrete sometimes, you know? Like, you're creating something um, uh, that is going to be sustainable. And, of course, a lot shifted and changed in my life where that sacred container for being able to hold this um, when, you know, shifted when I uprooted my entire life and moved to Israel. That's a huge thing. So, like, everyone felt that. So, of course, like, um, the sacred space that I had created needed to have um, uh, a sacred pause to be able to re-alchemize where I feel grounded in this location to be able to do the show to bring energy speaks 
from a completely different location. And you know what? I want to I wanna say something. Actually, I was talking with Carmela, who was recently on the show, maybe like a month or so ago, like from when this is released. Um, maybe two months, probably. <laughs> I think it was March. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Um, and of course, she is into astrology, as I am. And we were talking about um, uh, our... Um, uh, I, was, I was talking about, like, the different charts and the progress chart. And, and again, the um, progress chart is, like, uh, take your, ch- your birth chart and today's and integrate the information into, like, how your soul is growing, essentially, and what energies... Um, are a part of your journey at this stage of life and um, and I had a huge huge insight of like how incredible like um, these energies are received is in Florida right now if I were in Florida right now my rising or ascendant sign would be embodying Capricorn energy. Now, innately, it's it's um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, innately it's Sagittarius. But what's really funny is um, so Capricorn again that structure. Like I was really feeling into that structure. Okay, now again that's an initiator sign, a cardinal sign. So I was being very initiative, taking the initiative in Florida to really build the structure. Now, check this out. Over in Israel, in Jerusalem specifically where I'm at, my rising or ascendant is actually Gemini, which is immutable sign. So like, yeah, it's all about communication. So yes, of course I'm going to con- connect with this communication, right? But now... The goal here is the consistency and how, how do I create this, this sacred, um, you know, foundational piece here like I did in, it, well, it doesn't have to be like I did in, in Florida, but it has its own uniqueness here. And this is not me being confounded by zodiac energies it's showing awarenesses of oh wow okay so like i connected deeper to the capricorn energy in florida okay got it now i connect um deeper to the gemini energy through my personality here okay all right i can use that to to have that awareness to to to, to take this to a whole new level right and that's, that's awesome. So again, like, um, those are some insights from this past year of like doing this and in the sacred pause that I took, right? So it birthed out this, this, um, this show, this, this beautiful part of my soul that I wanted to share with the world. And now, um, it, it's saying, Hey, uh, we're ready to attract this energy in again and really embody it okay so like it was already felt completely in florida now it's time to mirror that image which is the virgo energy and 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 embodying um the 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 reflection of what i just experienced of this past year and moving it forward and also creating more depth like let's go it's kind of like um <clears throat> when you're in a car and you have um a stick shift right like we're in one of those speed cars right and we're in first gear well first year was first gear and now i'm saying i want to go a little bit faster or deeper or whatever it doesn't have to be faster but like i want to i want to take it to a new level and so i shift gear and I'm now in stage two of Energy Speaks podcast. 
And so, that being said, I don't know what's coming yet. I don't know what's coming next. I have, I have, um, I, I'm still creating the structure on how I want to do things. But I will say, um, I'm following my intuition and my insights. And um, it's going to birth something brand, brand new and a lot of depth. And so um, <clears throat> one thing I'm noticing uh, with, with this is you're going to hear this episode. It is the last episode that I have created. I have created other episodes previous that will not be released until after this episode. So what I'm noticing here is I may not release them in order and may have a divine, um, you know, tuning in of what is to be released at which moment, which gives me a little bit more creative freedom of things so I will do my best when recording to um, to state this saying okay well this this um, this may be recorded after but um, so if there's a, a little bit of a story around whatever I was talking about in the previous one I'm letting you know and um, I feel like uh, it's going to be really fun putting the puzzles together. It makes a lot of sense. Puzzles, Gemini. Hey, my personality right now, hilarious in Gemini season. Okay, so um, uh, what's, what's to come, at least on Energy Speaks podcast, uh, from what I have recorded, we're going to hear... Um, a little bit of, of talking points of, um, from the counting of the Omer, and then insights from Shavuot. So I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the depths of my heart and my soul for listening to Energy Speaks podcast. And if you would like to be on Energy Speaks podcast, this something you know you really want to have a sacred conversation and express whatever you want to express to the world please contact me um, you can either go to energy speaks by cotriel.com and there will be um, a aspect of the website that has talks about my podcast and you can literally press the button and say be on my show and um, <clears throat> it will send you to my email directly, or you can type in my email. And that is Kevin, K E V I N, D W I T T, 1107, which is my birthday, <laughs> at gmail.com. And so, um, again, um, that is open to you. Um, and I would love to have you on the show. And if you would like to take part of any of my um, beautiful uh, gifts to the world that I bring, my services, my offerings, whether that be through an astrological lens, through a soul lens, or my everyday type of conscious services, or um, would like to uh, get a um, jewelry piece or an art piece um, again you can go to the website or contact me directly um, via my email and um, I thank you all divine beautiful souls for listening again this is Energy Speaks Podcast with your host Katriel over and out Shalom <laughs>